afternoon. Would everyone uh, stand up this evening and uh, worship with us uh, today? There, did I unmute it? There we go. Okay. tongues to sing my great redeemer's praise the glories of my god and king the triumph of his grace my gracious master and my god assist me to proclaim to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name so come on and sing out let our Fears and bends our sorrow seas. This music in the sinners ears is life and health and peace. So come on and sing out, let our anthem grow loud. There is one great love. There is one great love. Jesus. Listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful, broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Glory to God and praise and love be ever, ever given by saints below and saints above the church in earth and heaven. So come on and sing. Oh boy, how you guys like this weather? How many of you guys are excited for fall after this? Okay, everybody that has your hand up, there's the door. <laughs> it's still summer. <laughs> you know what's weird? It was mostly teachers that raised their hand and said that they're ready for fall. I don't get that at all. But... Well, it is still summer, so we still got summer stuff going on. Uh, one thing that we have coming up this week on Thursday, we're going to have the old church kayak float trip at the Niangua River. Um, I have been telling you guys wrong for the last couple of weeks. They are not meeting here at the church. They are just going to meet at the Outfitter at NRO at 8.30 and that is up just a little bit north of Lebanon. It takes about two hours to get there, so uh, Chris is saying just plan accordingly. There is still a sign-up sheet over there on the black table. If you would like to go, like I said, you can either get kayaks, uh, canoe, you can get rafts. The prices are all over there on the table, so get signed up for that. Um, I don't know that he has said that there is a cutoff date for that, so... If you're still on the fence, I may get in trouble for this, but I guess you can just drive up there Thursday morning and hope for the best. So, um, One other thing, you might see over here these neon yellow shirts, the disaster response team. If you are a part of that, I, um, we went out in May, it was May, I think, when we had those straight line winds that knocked down some trees, and a couple of people noticed that our shirts still said CCUMC, Disaster Response Team. So we got some new ones that just says Christ Community because we are no longer a UMC. So 
Um, those are over there. I think it says that they're 10 bucks. I looked at that and I can't remember. Is that right? Okay. So if you're on the disaster response team, uh, or if you're not, if you want to sign up, this is a way to sign up. So they have, uh, or they did, I don't know if Jeremy took it with him, but, um, if you want to be a part of it, you can go ahead and buy one of those. And if the sign up sheet isn't still over there, you can let me know. And I will get in touch with Jeremy Moffat, who runs the disaster response team and make sure that you get signed up for the text alerts when they're going to go out and do stuff. So um, last thing, we have a mission minute tonight. Um, Karen Finstermacher volunteers at the community clinic kind of off and on for many, many years. And so she was here for the first three services, but she is, if I remember right, she told me like a week ago, but I think that she has a Bible study that she's a part of tonight, so she couldn't be here tonight. But we're going to show her video. She did want to point out that the reason everybody is wearing a mask in these videos is because it was filmed in uh, 2022. So... Uh, if you want to go and volunteer there, they're not going to make you wear a mask as soon as you get out of the car and start walking in the building. But here we go. The clinic's mission is to improve the health of people in our community without access to medical or dental care. In pursuit of this mission, the clinic provides comprehensive health, dental, mental health, and advocacy services to people without insurance. The clinic was founded in 1993 as a volunteer-only medical clinic operating out of the Presbyterian Church. Since that time, the clinic has grown to provide health care with 14 paid employees, 25 clinical volunteers, and over 50 non-clinical volunteers. The cornerstone of the clinic's services is our medical care with primary care, specialty care, lab services, pharmacy, counseling, physical therapy, and nutrition all under one roof. When health care is provided to a person that is done without care for years, we see their health drastically improve. When 2,000 area residents that consider the clinic their medical home or offer care, we see positive impacts on the health of our entire community. Daily, we have patients who come to us who do not know where to turn. Once they meet with our clinical staff, they have hope that their medical needs will be addressed. Once health issues are improved, patients are able to be more active in their community, their home and their place of employment. It is exciting to be part of that transformation. If you hadn't gotten the services with the doctor and the nutrition the class. classes and the insulin especially, that we would probably have had to go to the hospital more than likely and we would have self-paid which would have cost us thousands and thousands of dollars and it wouldn't have gotten the ongoing health care that he needed and the insulin and stuff that he needed, we would not have been able to afford that. An important component of comprehensive health care is providing mental health in a non-judgmental atmosphere. Our professional counselors understand that mental health plays an important role on physical health. We use mindfulness-based cognitive therapy to challenge our patients, helping them see that unhealthy choices stem from our responses to the thoughts and emotions that overcome us. We find that both one-on-one -on -one counseling and group activities through our empowerment program help people experience new approaches toward a healthy lifestyle. The clinic has helped and has pretty much saved my life. They were an advocate for me um, and they were every step of the way making sure that I had the best care possible. And I'm just incredibly grateful and didn't expect that at all. We are proud that throughout COVID, we have not reduced our services and have in fact increased significantly due to more people finding themselves without insurance. Our collaborations in the community with Mercy, Freeman, KCU, Missouri Southern, and many others allow us to provide high quality health care for people in need. So that is one of the missions that we support here financially, so that um, when you give here at the church, that is one of the things that your money goes to. But they are in need of volunteers as well. Karen said this morning that you don't have to be